We have done uh, quite a number of videos as far as Gateway Church is concerned. Guys, believe it or not, another pastor was fired from Gateway Church. Why? Uh, because of uh, moral failure. Okay? They did not disclose what it is, but they, whatever the situation is, does require this guy to be fired from the ministry, executive pastor. So it's just like, you know what, at this point, they should just shut down the church, if you ask me. Way, way Church, yet another pastor has now resigned. And this is coming, of course, after the very beginning of all of this. The megachurch's founder, Robert Morris, stepped down back in June. That was over allegations of inappropriate sexual behavior several decades ago, and at that time with a 12-year-old girl. Well, today, Dawn White is hearing from some Gateway members about what they now want to see happen next. It may look like business is normal outside Gateway Church, but inside, church members say what's happening feels like a soap opera. I feel like as Gateway turns, you know, it's like, okay, well, what's going to happen on the next episode of Gateway Church? Gateway Church elder Trey Wilbanks posted a message on YouTube Wednesday about the resignation of former executive pastor Kemtel Glasgow. We were informed last week of a moral issue which we believe as elders disqualifies him from serving in the role that he had at Gateway. We love his family. We love his wife and his kids, and we want to come alongside them during this difficult time. The Gateway Church spokesperson sent me this statement Thursday, saying in part, to be clear, the decision regarding Chemtall had nothing to do with the departure of Robert Morris, nor is related to those circumstances. It's tragic. I, I feel for his wife and family. It's heartbreaking. It's just... It just is ongoing and it's it's horrible. Gateway Church member Catherine Leach says she hasn't been to a service since June. I couldn't in all good conscience. Um, I came here, brought water to protesters, um, wanted to go inside and see how things were handled. Um, quite honestly, at the time, I was appalled just with it seemed like business as usual. Several Gateway Church members met with church leaders Thursday afternoon, not only to talk about some of their concerns, but to propose solutions after the series of pastors have stepped down. I made the suggestion that they become a member of ECFA. It's a uh, credentialing um, organization for churches about transparency and accountability for financials. That's not the only idea Gateway Church member Valentina Hansen proposed. I even made a suggestion that they have um, a place on their website to um, to where parents can go to know how their children are being protected. I reached out to Glasgow for comments, but I haven't heard back. In South Lake Dawn White, CBS News, Texas. All right, so as you can see, these, these are members of Gateway Church. The other one says she hasn't been to church. She hasn't been to church since uh, January. So, I mean, if that is the case, you know, you might as well just find another church. But this is what happens, right? Like, whenever... Uh, these are the repercussions, right? This is just because, because of what happened with Robert Morris. All these other things are coming into play, okay? So you can see that they just had a very bad culture at the church. Hello, Gateway family. I have an important family update for you. Gateway has over 560 employees, and we won't make it a practice to update you on all of our staff changes, but we did feel like it was important to update you on this staff change. As of Monday this week, Kimtel Glasgow is no longer employed at Gateway. We were informed last week of a moral issue which we believe as elders disqualifies him from serving in the role that he had at Gateway. We love his family. We love his wife and his kids, and we want to come alongside them during this difficult time and help them find restoration and healing that they need as a family. And we would ask that you as a church would pray for them as well. What this does do is it makes a way for us now to promote Adana Wilson into overseeing the campus pastors. So Adana, effective yesterday, stepped into that role. We're excited for Dana. Adana is gonna be a perfect person to take on this responsibility, and she's gonna do terrific. I wanna ask you to continue to pray for our family, pray for Kim Tell and his family, pray for Adana and her family as she steps into this role as well with new responsibilities. We love you, and we do thank you for continuing to pray for us during this time. So it looks like, you know, their cleaning house, you know, Robert Morris' son is gone. Who knows what else is going to um, happen again. And then if that is not all, um, Robert Morris' son, son-in-law, he is, I guess, I, I, who can blame him? I don't blame him personally, okay? He just decided to distance himself from Gateway completely. Okay, so what he has done, uh, they are changing the name of their church. 
I, I mean, <laughs> can you blame the guy? No, you cannot blame the guy. What can God do in this place? This is a question we asked and prayed over for years before Gateway Church Houston launched in January of 2020. Over the last four years, we have seen a glimpse of who God is calling us to be. There are countless stories of people who have found hope, community, freedom, healing, and purpose, and experienced the life-transforming power of God. From being portable to our first permanent location in Katy, and then our second permanent location in Magnolia, we have seen God's goodness, faithfulness, and provision. We are truly in the middle of a miracle. This church is more than a name on a building. It is full of people who are willing to say yes to God, to pray consistently, give generously, and serve sacrificially to see people everywhere know God, belong to family, discover purpose, and build the kingdom. In Hebrews 12, it tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. A pioneer is one who sets the path for others to follow. As God's people, he is calling us to be not mere spectators, but participators in this journey of faith. Every path we have walked has been following the voice of God as he builds his church. God is doing a new thing in our community. As we launched Gateway Houston, it was full of the legacy and heritage of those who have gone before us, and I am truly grateful. Over the past year and a half, God has been speaking to us about creating a distinct localized identity. We believe the Lord has given us a new name. This next chapter is about obedience and stepping out in faith to be who God has called us to be. In scripture, when God changed the name, he was speaking prophetically to who that person was to become. I believe today God is speaking to us to look forward to who we are to become. I am excited to announce that Gateway Houston is becoming Newlands Church. I am full of hope and expectation that God has amazing things in store for you, your family, and our church. And I believe the best is yet to come. There you have it, guys. Okay? So, obviously, they always say God is speaking, right? They said that God was speaking to have uh, James Morris to be the senior pastor, and now he's no longer a senior pastor. Now God is speaking to them to change the name. Like, just say that, you know what? With the issue that has happened, we've just decided to change the name. But these people, they always want to blame God with everything. Okay? So it's just like, all right, fine. You are just rebranding, distancing yourself from Gateway, which is fine, given the situation where you're coming from. But I don't think that, you know, God is telling them, okay, now you need, you know, you need to change your name. <laughs> I don't know.